the kind of the homebrew computing phenomena happening. How are you changing your company to address this? So what we're seeing is that there are literally tens of thousands, if not more, people who want to engage in creative activities. They want to make something. They, they want to modify something. They have an idea. And up until now, that was unavailable to them. And as we kind of put out these probes and we tried different products, we, we just kept tapping into this unbelievable community of people who want to be making things. If you empower individuals, you know, and you throw enough sort of brains at, at, at a problem, that they will come up with answers that are better, faster, cheaper, uh, et cetera. That's been true for bits right. um, in the digital world. Now, with the same sort of distribution of these tools, both the prototyping mechanical machining right. tools and the software tools, the presumption would be that we'll solve the energy problem with you know with, with individual you know ideas we'll solve you know uh, food and health and other problems that, that in a sense that, that that individuals can do things that big companies can't do it used to be that in order to make things you needed those big expensive machines mm. nowadays you can produce things at really really high quality in low volume at rel relatively affordable prices. And so what we're trying to do is give people tools that enable them to do that. Right now you, uh, you have products that cost thousands of dollars, yeah. um, uh, not accessible to this new class of, you know, of, of makers. Yeah. Um, what, what's, what do you intend to do about that? So one of the things we did is we, we're, ju we're just bringing out a product. Um, it's in beta right now. It's coming out in a couple weeks. It's called 123D. It's made for makers. If you want to make things, it's actually a free product that we're making available with the idea that it's not just for making a digital thing, it's for actually making physical representations of things. Yeah. Okay, so here's, here's a plastic print of a chair. That over there is the exact same chair made out of cardboard. So it was laser cut and glued together out of cardboard. Wow, okay, so this is lots and lots of cardboard layers that were just glued to, uh, laser cut and then glued together. Yeah, so you as a kid could go, you could, you could make this, you could design it, and then you could either cut out the cardboard, or we're now working with companies, uh, companies like Pinoco, who are doing things like allowing you to ship your design to them and allow you to take that and cut it. Um, they'll cut it for you and they'll flat pack it and ship it to you. There's another great company called Tech Shop that's building locations, kind of like a gym membership, but mm. for makers, and they're setting up locations around the country where you can go in and for a monthly membership, have access to all these tools yourself, so you could go in and cut that yourself. So we have something like that. We have some plastic that was made into a bench over here. Um, there's another version of the chair over here out of folded metal. So right now it's too hard for most people. They, right. they, um, the, the authoring tools are too hard. Um, they don't have these machines. They don't have a tech shop local to them. They don't have the skills. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, you want to pick print, right? You want right. to go to your menu and you want to say, well, say make, right? Yeah. So you go to the menu and you pick make. And at that point, it sort of walks you through a sort of, well, here are your choices. Materials, um, cost, um, the volume, et right. cetera. Can I... You know, if I have an idea, can you imagine a day by which I can just sort of say, um, you know, I'd like to make one, a thousand, a million. <laughs> you know, can I become an entrepreneur simply by choosing a menu item? Yeah, I, I think you absolutely can. So we're working with this thing of being able to capture images from reality, so objects from reality, and start there. So we, we, we took a couple photographs that when you put them together, look just like a couple of images put together, but it's actually a 3D model in there. So you not only can start with that, but you could also take that and, for example, you could modify it. So you take images with your iPhone, yeah. you take that, you upload them to the cloud, it creates a 3D model, you get it back, you hit print, and you decide, I want the little plastic one, I want the one made out of metal, I want the one out of plexiglass, or I want, you know, whatever I want, and as many as I want. So I think there's this untapped vein of creativity that thousands and thousands of people will have. This is saying anything you can imagine, you can make. I mean, and that, that's an incredible breakthrough. Last question, is this the future of American manufacturing? I hope so. I, I, I mean, I think we can change to the place where, maybe it was number three on there. I mean, the place where you have really high value manufacturing and you can do specialty manufacturing. I, I think we have to change our notion of what manufacturing is and where it can go on. And then I think you can, you can have a return to American manufacturing. Great. Please join me in thanking Carl Bass.